Well, hello there, my live lovelies. How are you? I'm so sorry about the previous video that I just posted. It had no sound for the first 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, God. I'm telling you, I'd be dangerous if I had a brain. I know I did the voiceover. But anyway, God knows what happened to that. Um, yeah, so today I am fulfilling my megalomaniac tendencies by creating my own resin army resin robot army <laughs> and uh yes i found this delightful mold and i thought they'd make really great party favors um you know for the goodie bags that you give out at kids parties or um you know little ornaments for the tree at christmas um, so there's quite a lot of detail in these moulds as you can see and um, I'm just trying to get rid of the bubbles with this micro brush. If you haven't got this, these micro brushes, honestly they're amazing. They're really really useful in resin I have to say. And um, uh, fair warning, um, Helga the Hottie is about to make an appearance. So, question, should Helga the Hottie have entrance music? <laughs> or is that getting really, really silly? <laughs> oh dear, yeah, so thank many thanks to Claire Waldrope for the name. Uh, you're an absolute sweetheart. Honestly, I have the best subscribers. They're all with me in my madness. Uh, so, today we're going to be doing two different types of um, alcohol ink techniques. So the first one that we're going to be doing is um, with the Let's Resin Vibrant Inks and we're going to be dropping in, um, we're, we're going to be doing the technique that, um, that Daniel Cooper um, kind of invented, uh, I think. Um, and is very, very, very good at. If you haven't seen his videos, he does the instruction part a lot better than me. This is more sort of if you've got the technique, but there's not really a lot to it, if I'm honest with you. Um, it's about more about knowing your resin and when, it, when it's thick enough, really. Um, and once you've got that, it's really not, not that difficult. But yes, yeah, so I'm selecting the colours. So the first ones were this orange and turquoise green. I really like kind of orange and sort of bluey combinations. Um, I did some cabochons a few weeks ago and I did an orange and blue combination and it turned out so, so beautifully. And I've been trying to recreate it ever since and failing miserably. Um, yeah, so I'm carrying through that turquoise green um, into the next, the next robot and then selecting the next colour, which I've chosen not to tell you what it is. I'm going to have to find that in a, I think it's a purple Yes, it's a purple. Yay! <laughs> it's all working. Everything's under control. Um, and then I use the purple in the next set as well, um, just to save on having to open other bottles, save on a bit of time. Um, so I kind of wanted an orange and blue, and then kind of a, a purple and blue and then a purpley pink and then I think we go kind of orangey fiery kind of co colours in the last one um, and then with this technique you just wait an hour or so so this I'm using is um, Vibra Vista Cascade and honestly it's like water um, I don't heat my part A before I um, before I put it, I mix it, I have kind of a heat tool on um, about half a metre away and I just really gently heat it as I mix it. I, found, I find that um, that works for me. 
Um, yes, and there's very, very few bubbles. So anyway, getting back to what I was saying, um, my when I do this, I normally have to wait about an hour and a half for Cascade to start thickening up. You may find that this that it takes less time because um, the rate at which resin cures um, is really dependent on so many things. It, it's dependent on obviously the type of resin you use, how much you mix up, how long you let it stand and the container it's in, uh, the heat of the room. Um, there's so many factors that will, you know, that will affect how quickly your resin cures up. So I can hear you asking, how do I know when to, you know, when to do my effects? So we're just getting, I will get to that. Be patient. <laughs> um, right, so I'm uh, using the, the white that comes in, comes with the vibrant inks. And it honestly, I was getting so frustrated with this, you know, the amount of times I've blimmin poked it with a pin and the darn thing just would not behave. Uh, in the end, I just cut the end off twice and it's still clogging up. <laughs> it's so annoying. Um, I suspect it's because, you know, the white is a bit heavier, a bit thicker. All whites, I, I believe, um, contain titanium dioxide. And um, as a result, it, it's heavier. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, please do. But that's what I've, you know, I've found on another video. Anyway, um, actually, I am not doing the blinking Daniel Cooper technique. Honestly, the amount of times I've done the voiceover for this. <laughs> and I'm still getting it wrong. Right, so this is the cloud technique by Miriam's Nature. And, um, yeah, so getting the mix of the, of the white right is really your battle here. And, um, so I just mix up a load of white and, um, string it in as thinly as I can. And I think I do the Petri effect technique next. Um, sorry, honestly, I'm a nightmare. Just why do you listen to me? <laughs> Just, oh, so annoying. Anyway, yes, yeah, so your real battle here is going to be um, getting the mix of the white right. And really, there's it's trial and error. So you don't want too much and you don't, you want it to look probably a bit like um, I would say semi-skimmed milk, if that's possible. Um, but just have a go. So you can see here, I have waited until it's a bit stringy. Um, so you just put a pokey thing in, and if a string follows it, then you know it's ready. Okie dokie. Uh, so that's that technique. Thank goodness for I got to the end. <laughs> Oh, good grief. Yeah, so I thought you, you guys would want a close-up. And there's no rhyme nor reason of how I'm actually doing the swirls. I'm just trying to do something slightly different in each, really. So I'm going to leave this um, complete and utter mess of a voiceover. And let you enjoy this because I think I demold straight away could be right at the end who knows i don't know what i'm doing um yeah so i'll leave you to it <laughs> speak to you soon
Alrighty, so demold mod day. I uh, loved this is the first time I've done this technique, so I've got no idea how it's gonna look. Now the problem is that these are obviously uh matte moulds, so let's see if we can see anything. No, I can't really see anything. Those that one's not been successful, I don't think. The ink hasn't dropped down. Let's have a look. No, I can't. There's too much detail on the actual mould. What a shame. Uh, this one's overrun a bit. But these are pretty colours, hey? Oh, that one seems to have worked quite well. Look. It's really difficult to see though. I don't think this technique works that well with these. Cute though. So oh, I love these colours. Very cute, but again, I don't think the mould really shows off the technique very well. But that's okay, we can, it's good to try these things, it's still very, very pretty. So they will need top coating, obviously. And then the last two. Oh, I love these colours, isn't he lovely and bright? I think this one works the best, actually. Oh, I do love my robots, but I think the Petri dish effect kind of works best with these. Aren't they beautiful? Reminds me of ice cream for some reason. Anyway, thank you for watching. Bye. Hello again. So are you still there? Are you still with me? <laughs> I hope so. I hope you haven't switched off. Um, but yeah, today I just thought I would show you two different techniques because um, I really wanted to try uh, to s show you how different techniques can work with different moulds. Um, so I'm just sprinkling in some beautiful glitter from Resin Supplies Den, Yvonne Bishop, the Glitter Queen. Um, and um, I do spend an awful lot of time sorting these out so they've got a roughly an equal amount of glitter in each which I did cut most of it out because <laughs> no one's got time for that have they um, and again I'm this time I'm being a bit more adventurous with the colours I really really am into orange and blue at the moment I don't know why but the problem is, is if they mix together, they're not great friends, but they, they don't mind being next to one another. Um, but with this technique, um, you're not really swirling. You're just kind of dropping it in and then putting the white. So this is, these are piñata inks. And um, the white is always going to be heavier because it it contains something called titanium dioxide I think um, and for some reason white pigments are heavier because of that um, please do correct me if I'm wrong um, I've heard it somewhere can't remember where haven't done tons of research so don't take my word for it do your own research um, and here of course I'm squeezing the bottle far too much and it's all coming out rather quickly um, <laughs> um, I've obviously put what colours I'm using here um, and um, yeah I think you'll you'll see towards the at, at the end obviously 
what what actually happens. I mean, this is dead easy. You just literally pour your resin. You don't have to wait. Um, I think I possibly waited a little bit too long with these. Um, this might have been an afterthought in another pour that I was doing. And um, it's best to do it when you've just poured. So you've got a thin viscosity resin. You drop your inks and then you drop your white on top and you can do a few layers I think I only did one layer um, just to see what effects I got and I think I might try with um, two or three layers next time to see how they come out but it's really useful to do these kind of experiments um, it, it it is so mindful when you when you do this um just watching the inks dance as daniel cooper puts it daniel cooper's got this great channel he's only just recently joined um youtube but he's doing phenomenally well go and say hi to him and check out his channel he's a lovely lovely chap um so you can see here now i've put the piñata white in a needle tip bottle and I've just added all, all of that to the robots. So now I am going to demold and let's see what effects we get. Hello there, okay it's the next day and I'm demolding my robots. Made a ton of these before. Uh, there are some pictures on my Instagram, so I'm hoping I've perfected the technique, but we'll see. Saying that, oh, they're a bit bendy. Are they a bit bendy? I think they'll be all right. Oh, they are a bit bendy. Right, so I'm going to give them... See, the white has dropped a bit too far there. And they will need to be top coated. But I think it kind of gives them character. Actually, no, the white hasn't dropped. That is the uh, glitter. That is the glitter that has dropped down. But I think it gives it a bit of character, actually. Oh, I like them. They are a bit bendy, see? You can see my fingerprints on there. And, oh, very cute. I like them. That was meant to be orange and teal. Look, if I just spray them a little bit. I'm in a very well ventilated room they kind of come to life don't they oh they're so cute look at this guy see not a lot has dropped down only a little bit but he's quite cute oh i'm really pleased with him Blue looks amazing, doesn't it? So that's those two. I'll do these four and I'll give them a quick spray. And then I'm going to leave the room. God. Green and yellow, I thought worked really well. I did some other ones earlier. I've been playing with inks. Cute. This colour combo seems to be very popular, so at some point, if I decide to have a stall somewhere, there we go, and they're cute. Right, I'll give these a quick spray.
There we go. Right, I think I'll take you down for a look. They look amazing on camera. They don't look quite so vibrant in real life, but they will do. And I guess they look like this in sunlight. But just look at the texture of that one. Can you see? <laughs> He's so cute. Yeah, I think I possibly waited a little bit too long for um, before dropping inks. I will have a go again. And these look cool as well, don't they? Interesting colour combo. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.